Hello to all of my Taurus. This is Queen Amun Ra coming to you with your general reading, Taurus. Happy waxing crescent moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is currently retrograde. All that's good because Saturn being retrograde reminds all of us to learn how to create very firm boundaries and enforce those boundaries, not be afraid to enforce those boundaries. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Saturn is the planet of authority and maturity. Um, when you think about Saturn, you want to think about um, mature responsibility, like closing out cycles in love, closing them out in a very mature, very authoritative way. Uh, let's go. Let's see what your cards have to say, Taurus. Let's do it. High Priestess Energy. Here we have the Star card. Here we have the King of Swords. Here we have the Ace of Swords, the Tower card, and the World card. Yes, indeedy. The High Priestess card. I do see... Um, I do see somebody, you may have felt like somebody left you naked and vulnerable and moving forward. You're saying, I need to stay laser focused on my purpose. If I had an, if I didn't have an awakening before, I have an awakening now. Here is the world card. This is Saturn. This is Saturn's card. I see you closing out a cycle in love. I see you moving on in a very mature and a very authoritative way. Here we have the Ace of Swords and also the King of Swords. I do see you having a breakthrough breakthroughs definitely when you feel like okay I, I had an awakening like I know how to read between the lines when we're talking about uh ace uh when we talk about sword energy we're talking about um we're talking about energies that like I said before anybody who may have left you feeling and I'm talking to you by the way if you have Taurus anywhere in your birth chart not just your sun sign right anywhere so um, I'm talking to me, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to cross watchers who have Taurus in their birth chart, I'm talking to anybody who has Taurus in their birth chart. You definitely are having a tower moment and learning how to close out cycles, learning how to tap into that intuition. Somebody definitely have an awakening. This is what the tower card is for, is to stay laser focused on your purpose. Stay focused on your purpose. When you're closing out cycles, you're closing them out in a very authoritative way. If people cross boundaries, you're saying, I need to go ahead and close this out. Sometimes people overstep boundaries, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and don't realize they overstep boundaries. And that's when it's like, because remember, it is it's levels to getting to your throne. So that would be a person who's asking too many personal questions too soon. That would be a person who assumes that they have, you know, full access to your universe, right? When there's levels to it, right? So um, let's see what we got here. We got the high priestess. We have coexist. We have the nine of cups, four of cups, the ace of cups, and also wisdom card. Somebody definitely has gained a lot of wisdom. I like what I'm seeing here in the cards. Somebody has definitely gained a lot of wisdom about learning how to coexist first and foremost with your own planetary alignments. You're not trying to coexist with any energy where you may have felt like somebody left you vulnerable and uncovered, right? When you can cover yourself because we don't, we can't save each other, right? Um, so I do see, like I said before, <clears throat> you may have had a tower moment where you gain wisdom about messages, learning how to read between the lines. So I see you sitting down somewhere and saying, I need to write out a list of things that I'm grateful for. That may seem real corny for some people to write out a list of what you're grateful for, like things people take for granted. I'm glad that I'm breathing. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that whatever you're grateful for, I don't want to plant any seeds, but source wants you to stop leaving your inner child unprotected. This is your divine masculine to your divine feminine energy. And this is your inner child. Like stop leaving your inner child unprotected, right? Here we have the high priestess. High priestess came out twice. So somebody definitely has a lot of spiritual gifts. So that could be all the clairs, clear, when I say that, clairvoyant, claircognizance, they play sentience, clairvoyance. Source wants you to protect your creativity, protect your water, protect your emotions. Protect your emotions, protect your emotions, protect your emotions. So, yeah, let's see what else we got going on. Here we have the Six of Swords, we have the Three of Wands, the Knight of Wands, the Queen of Wands, the Chariot card, and also the Five of Wands. Source definitely, here's a chariot card. So source is definitely rewarding you for moving on at a high frequency, right? Not, even though somebody could be like this, source is saying, stay away from the hot headedness, stay away from all of that, because that tower could fall either way. So source is saying, if people are speaking negatively about you, this is, this is karma. 
karma. So if people are speaking negatively, if they have ill will towards you in their heart to hurt you and those things like that. So sometimes people wait around for other people to get their karma. Oh, I hope they know how they made me feel and so on away. So it's just saying to you, if people's, if people's intention is not to hurt you, but the communication is you have to read between the lines. You're not going to see anything if you're waiting around for, because karma is not good or bad. It's just energy. Source is saying to you, um, six of swords, I see you moving on from any disappointment, entering into a season of abundance and prosperity. We also have the five of wands and just recognizing that again, somebody is also battling their demons. So something for you could feel like, you know, a temptation for you could feel like I want to warm up to something and then like here, that hothead. A lot of times people don't, when you're, when you're interacting with people who have spiritual gifts, you have the um, high priestess card here and you also have the high priestess card here. So it's just saying, if you could see on this card right here, this is number two, is Roman numeral two, but it still looks like an 11. This is where Source is saying, look at the, you see these dark pillars right here. You see the light pillars right here. And you see also the moon facing that way. So moving forward, Source is saying, learn how to listen to your intuition where, like read between the lines. Like a person could say to somebody, hey, I'm really, really busy, but you don't realize how busy they are until they don't have time for you, Right. And somebody could be, and so Source is trying to say to you, instead of getting hot-headed about things, recognize that when people are saying out of their mouth that they are busy, recognize that they are busy. So if, if let's say for instance, you're, I'm looking at this right here. One of the things I'm seeing uh, for somebody is that there is somebody who could have been married to somebody. This is chariot card. Could have been married to somebody and you want the family, like the family, like your side or their side to coexist, right? And source is saying to you, it's better for you to learn how to first pull your own birth chart before you agree to coexisting with anybody on the planet. I say this almost every time I do readings, please pull your birth chart so that you can know what nurtures you and what doesn't nurture you so that you can communicate that to people. If you need to be communicated to a certain way, you can communicate that to people right off top because if a person says that they're busy or that they are not, they're not interested in coexisting. Um, like for instance, let me give somebody an example of what's coming to me. I do see somebody getting married. That's one. Right. So I see somebody getting married, but I also see that in your wisdom and being in your light, you'll be able to see if somebody else may have worked through people who have left them vulnerable as well. So somebody could have been married in the past, this right here. And felt vulnerable and uncovered and just, you know, kind of left that thing and probably was upset, frustrated. You know, kind of like the story, the biblical story about Noah and Noah's sons and that one son, Ham, left his son, his father uncovered when he's like in a drunken state, right? So you may have been like drunken with hurt or not necessarily wine in that case, but you know, you could have been like not yourself because you could have had a lot of pain or whatever going on in your life and you may have felt like somebody left you uncovered. Well, we know in that particular story, that particular story, the son left his father uncovered. Then, you know, you, we all know this story. If you don't know the story, you can go read it. Noah's, uh, Noah's sons, you know, read about the uncovered and all of that other stuff. So I won't bore anybody with that. But you don't know if a person left you uncovered because people could actually be sending prayers your way when they have other stuff going on in their lives as well, Right. So when you're dealing with energies where people, you were, you were saying, well, I didn't know this and I didn't know that. And source is saying to you, you're in your, in your vulnerability, in your vulnerability. If people meant to harm you, then that's already come back on them. But if they mean you the best and they're saying, okay, I need to back away from a situation before, before, because I, I'm my own safety net, for instance. 
then you may have gotten a, a totally different story. Again, source is saying to you, your queen of wands energy right here and your three of wands energy right here, source is saying to you to move on beyond something and you'll feel a lot happier, charismatic, and free when you don't assume the worst and you allow energy to take care of itself. Whatever energy that's sent out into the universe is coming back. Again, I am talking to you if you have... Um, I also feel like, I also feel like, um, and I look at this too, this could be someone's child who wants their family to coexist. You know, like sometimes kids want mom's side of the family and dad's side of the family to all be able to get together and play nice with each other. Somebody also has to be respectful that if one parent on the other says no, to just be respectful. This is not all about, hey, you know, let's just all get together and pretend like we all get along. Something could have happened that was really, really traumatic that for somebody in a situation looking here, that it's, it, it's a no for you. It, it's somebody, you could have been through so much trauma, Taurus, that for you, somebody, even if your own kids say, hey, you know, just for the sake of family, can we all get together for you? It may be a, mm, I can't do that. I'm still healing from something. So the bottom line is that when you, when you create very firm boundaries and you're getting some rules and structure and disciplining yourself and learning how to be patient, you're not assuming the worst that somebody just left you high and dry and left you vulnerable and naked in a situation. You also got to pay attention to, okay, what was that conversation? Let me go back in my brain and look at what was the conversation, right? So I do, like I said, I feel like somebody's you may have been, or okay, you may have adult kids or an adult child that says, hey, I want everybody to get along. Or you could be that child that wants everybody to get along. Either or, source is saying to you, be respectful of other people's boundaries as well. Be respectful of other people's boundaries as well. Yeah, I feel like somebody was married to somebody and a lot of kids will say to their parents, can everybody just get together? Especially when the fact that in some parts of the world, we're coming up on the holidays. You know, some parts of the world, some people celebrate Thanksgiving, some people celebrate Christmas and people want people to get together and stuff. Boundaries, 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 boundaries. Sometimes people are telling you, you they're telling you their boundaries and sometimes you're telling them your boundaries and they're still... They're still static. So here we go. Here we have watch a movie. Source wants you to relax your mind, watch a movie. Looks like somebody is highly intuitive. And um, like I said, you're having an awakening to listen to your own intuition. Here we have the cha change. When the ego finally sees the utter madness of trying to control everything, you come to a sacred crossroad in your own evolution. Yeah, it looks like somebody definitely felt like somebody left them vulnerable and uncovered. And Source wants you to close out that cycle of assuming the worst and recognize that boundaries are in place. And it's, it's not easy getting to this right here. It's not easy to get to somebody and Source is trying to teach you how to learn how to create boundaries. It is definitely not easy getting to someone's throne. You don't just go into somebody's life and just start asking like a, a thousand questions about stuff. Um, and like I said, here we have, you're connecting with your ancestors. Learning how to connect with your ancestors. Learning how to connect with your ancestors. Yeah, that story is a very interesting story. Here we have meditate and contemplate. Somebody feels some kind of way about something, feels a bit overwhelmed about something because when we see this in Pisces, Pisces uh, symbol are two fish, even though you don't see them tied together. Um, something from your past is bringing up some kind of memories of somebody feeling overwhelmed and just uncovered and unprotected. And the bottom line is that source is saying to you, when you learn how to create very firm boundaries and you enforce those boundaries, however uncomfortable that may feel to people, no matter who the situation, whether you are the child, the adult child, whether you are the parent, whether you are the mentor, the mentee, the teacher, the student, the 
you know, husband, the wife, the whomever, and you enforce those boundaries, sometimes that's the only time people will get a message is when you enforce boundaries. So that's what Saturn is all about. Saturn, like I said, is the planet of authority and maturity. It's also the planet of concentration, structure, and order, limits, being serious. You know, you got to create limitations because otherwise people will just, just bum rush right on through your life. And so again, for somebody who's family or loved ones, because this is about marriage to feeling, your source is rewarding you for, I can't say taking the high road because it's, it's deeper than taking the high road. Source is saying you're, you're being rewarded for listening to your own intuition, looking at the light and dark of a situation and moving forward in love. Moving forward in love. All right, let's close it out, Taurus. Let's close it out. 25, I am intelligent. You have a great ability to take in and process information on both conscious and subconscious levels. Your curiosity is endless and your desire to dive deep into a variety of subjects will bring you an immense awareness of the world. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. The moon in Aquarius questions. Moon in Aquarius questions. I love these questions. Um, you can create your own questions if you like. A moon in Aquarius detaches us from every day, from the everyday, and it distances us from the known realities. It really just kind of sort of makes us, it reminds us of this tower card right here, even though this is not Aquarius' ruling planet. But it reminds us that, um, it reminds us that, We all come to this planet with a purpose, right? We all come to this planet with a purpose. Somebody has always had these spiritual gifts. And when you learn how to source the saying to yourself, looking at all of this, because it's a lot of fire here in the cars. When you learn how to motivate yourself to, because all it takes is the, uh, being in the presence of something, especially for you all as uh, you're being ruled by Venus, Venus, part of Venus is not just love and pleasure. It's also art, music, and aesthetics, right? So for instance, somebody may have this, um, somebody may have a an awakening when they go to a concert, right? Maybe you are shy and maybe you feel like, I don't have a whole lot of support around me that's going to support my music career or that's going to support me learning a new instrument, for instance. But you may be a music lover and you can be a Taurus or a Libra because Taurus and Libra are ruled by Venus. And you go to one concert and you find out that that person who is performing is the same sun sign, right? Of course, obviously, you're going to have different placements in your charts. And you may say, you know what? Even in my fam my whole family doesn't support me because I'm inspired by that person, then I'm, I can do this. I absolutely can do that. I can get nose to the ground. I can do this. I can learn it. I can pick up a book. I can, you know, I, I can do, I can speak this into existence. Because the reality of it is, is that again, you have to earn your, you'd have to earn your way to their throne. Especially when you think about how people are stalked. When you think about how people have to protect it. So that's, a, that's what somebody doesn't understand. It's like there's levels to it. Right. You can't just walk up to a person and just say, OK, well, just I'm going to bum rush myself into your life. That's what somebody had to learn is like learning how to create boundaries. And that's what this moon in Aquarius is going to help us to do, because Aquarius, like Capricorn, are, is also ruled by Saturn. So there's definitely rules. Uh, first question is, what can you do to use your passion for serving on a large scale? The second question is, are you creating space for yourself to connect with your inner alchemist and innovator? The third question is, are you ready to think outside the box and delete old beliefs and rules to write your own? Fourth question, is using technology a drain or gain for you? And then last but not least is, are you ready to start a group in your community to initiate and create positive change on a local or global scale? And then what could the focus be? What could the focus be? What could the focus be? Let me see. And then these um, moments of motivation cards. The person who created these cards is a... Um, is a supporter of this channel. They also, and I'm not trying to promote, they didn't ask me to promote this. They call, I just really like these cards here. Um, they also have a, um, like a meditation. They do these the meditation on their channel as well, which is really cool. So here we have affirmations for strength. 
All obstacles in my path are being cleared. I am stronger than yesterday. I am brave. I am courageous. I learn from my mistakes. Failure is a farce. All effort is testing. I rise above all that stands in my way. Improvement is my only concern. That's right. So somebody is learning how to take the high road and not assume the worst you know, about energies, it can be, it can be overwhelming. Anybody who has had any kind of public presence whatsoever, when people are, um, when people are moving too fast, too soon and overstepping boundaries as any, you all have known, you know, there's like, even when you first meet like people who want you to meet their family, cause I see you getting married. This is just about boundaries. And just in general, when you first meet someone's family, you could, like I said, you could really like that person, want to meet that person, but how you bring them into the family is going to make all the difference in the world. If it's too much too soon and you crossing boundaries and stuff like that, that person could feel like you left them vulnerable. Like, well, how come you didn't? You say, oh, no, this is my family. This is just who they are. You know, it's no big deal, so on and so forth. And they could feel like you just left them vulnerable for them. It could have lost them at that very moment. Or on the other side, you may have felt like, hey, I, somebody may have felt like you were getting a little bit too close too soon and it could have been overwhelming for them and they could have said, nope, I need to back away from this because this is all too familiar, especially if you dealt with somebody who's ever been stalked before. So in either case, source is saying, learn how to read between the lines and respect boundaries and also enforce your own boundaries, create and enforce your own boundaries. That is what I have for you. I will see you all on... I will see you all on Sunday. Thank you for joining me and I will see you all on Sunday. Hopefully those questions, um, hopefully those questions will help somebody uh, moving forward as we get ready for this first quarter moon phase in Aquarius on the 22nd. Right now the moon is in Capricorn. Remember boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Respect, create your boundaries and make sure you enforce your boundaries and not be afraid, but also expe uh, respect other people's boundaries and don't think the worst about situations. That is what I have for you and I will see you all on Sunday. Bye.